All right. Hi, everybody. Um, so in this uh, question, uh, the bonus question, okay, before I go into the explaining the bonus question, I just want to explain to you a little bit about the Archimedes principle. Okay. So before you can understand the iceberg question, you need to understand the Archimedes principle. So Archimedes principle is very simple, actually. So let's see what's happening here. So in picture A, we have a block. And that block may be an ice, right? Maybe that ice weighs 20 Newton. Okay, and then we put this ice on a beaker of water and of course the ice floats. Okay, we're gonna focus on uh, picture B in this question because the iceberg is actually floating, right? So let's look at the floating uh, version. And in this picture, we can see that once we put the ice in the beaker, some amount of water is spilled out, right? So we call it water displaced. And one thing that we need to notice is that the amount or the weight of the water displaced, okay, weight of water displaced is actually equal to the weight of the iceberg. Does it make sense? Makes sense, right? So the amount of water that spilled out is actually has the same weight as the amount of ice that's being that's being floated, that's floating on the water right now. Okay, so the weight of water displaced, okay, is equal to the weight of ice. And this is called the Archimedes principle. If you don't believe me, you can try it yourself. Okay, just uh measure the mass of an ice right put it in water and then you see how much water spilled out and the amount of water that spilled out is actually the same amount of mass as the ice okay so and of course the water has to be full to the brim yeah so to be able to see the spill over okay so that's the first thing we need to know okay the amount or the weight of water displaced or the mass of the water displaced, but since we're talking about force, we're gonna convert it into weight. So the weight of water displaced will be equal to the weight of the ice. Okay, or in this case, it's the iceberg. So this is one thing that we need to be able to know, notice, understand without being told to in the question. Okay, so now let's move on to the question. Now, knowing this, it'll be much easier to tackle this question. Okay, so a cylindrical iceberg of height H floats in seawater. Okay, it floats. And remember, when it floats, that means resultant force is zero, yeah? Okay, the top of the iceberg is at height H above the surface of the water. So this amount of height is above the surface of water, and then the rest will be submerged in the water. Okay. The density of ice is Pi, and the density of seawater is Pw. Or not P, sorry, rho I and rho W. What is the height H of the iceberg above the seawater? Okay. Before we even tackle the question, let's do what we always do. What is it? Break down the question. Always break down the question. So let's break down the question here. Let's identify what are the forces acting on the iceberg. Okay. So we know, of course, as always, the iceberg has weight. Okay. Weight of the ice. So I'm just going to call this uh, W ice. Okay. And then, of course, there is an uptrust acting on the ice as well, uh, provided by the seawater. And that's W. And again, because it's floating, we can say that the uptrust, okay, will be equal to the weight of ice. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, okay, the weight of ice is equal to the weight of water displaced. And this will be equal to the weight of the water displaced.
okay i hope that make that makes sense okay uh so now what we need to figure out is what is the volume of water displaced what is the weight of water displaced okay the weight of water displaced is this part right can you imagine so if i take this shape of water right if i take that amount of water okay this amount of water is displaced from the water right because it's being taken over by ice so if i converted this volume of water okay into weight that will be the weight of water displaced okay i hope that makes sense so now we know that we can conclude that up thrust is equal to the weight of water displaced okay and we also know that the weight of ice is also equal to the weight of water displaced sorry wrong color right based on this based on this equation i can conclude this right i'm just rewriting the equation basically so how do we find the weight of ice how do we find weight of ice that means we need the mass of ice times g okay and to find the weight of water displaced that will be the mass of water times g and again how do we find mass when we have density and volume okay how do we find mass we need to find density times volume right density times volume times volume right so that means to find the mass of ice i need the density of ice which is rho i times the volume of ice so i'm just going to call it v ice okay times g again same thing to find the mass of water i need to find i need to use rho w times the volume of water displaced okay volume of water displaced okay water displaced times g so i have this equation now and i can cross out some things right so what can i cross out i can cross out g okay and then i can create an equation so what is this equation this equation is now i can write it as v v ice oh sorry v water displaced v water displaced over v ice will be equal to rho ice over rho water displaced or rho w rho water because density of water is the same okay so now think about it the volume of water displaced over the volume of ice what can you tell from this look the volume of water displaced over the volume of ice what does that mean right if i if i redraw the iceberg so let me just redraw the iceberg so this is the iceberg and then this is the amount of water displaced right so this is the water and the amount of water displaced is this much right so if i put a ratio of volume of water displaced over the entire volume of ice what can i say about this equation so this equation actually means the fraction 
of ice or refraction of water that is submerged, right? This is the fraction of ice that is underwater. Makes sense, right? Because volume of water displaced is here, is under the water over the volume of the entire ice. So this fraction also means the fraction of ice that is underwater. So that means how do I find the fraction of ice above water? So to find the fraction of ice above water, it's quite simple, right? It's just one minus fraction of ice that is submerged, that is below the water. Make sense, right? So this is the fraction of ice above the water surface. See, we're almost getting to the answer. Because the question is, what is the height of the iceberg above the seawater? So now we have already found the fraction. We already found the fraction of ice that is above the water. Now, this is still in terms of volume. How do we find it in terms of height? Okay. What we need to find first is, so if I want to find height of ice, height of ice above water, that means I just need to multiply one minus phi water displaced over V of ice multiply by the height, the entire height of the iceberg, right? But if you look at the choices, all the choices are in terms of density. Don't worry. We already found, remember this equation, right? We already found this equation, okay? So this is actually equal to 1 minus rho i over rho w multiply by h. And there is an answer for this in the options. In the options, that will be option. What option is that? Oh, no. Sorry, guys. That will be option A, right? Option A. There you go. And that's why the answer is A. All right, I hope my explanation is clear. It takes about 17 minutes. Uh, just fast forward it if it's too slow. Yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you, guys.